Hi, my name is Christian Vasnight and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Iga Shiontek will have to wait another year before claiming her second Sunshine Double as the world number one was dominated by Ekaterina Alexandrova 6-4-6-2 in the Miami Open fourth round. Alexandrova honestly played the best match of her life. She's a very flat ball striker, so of course we know these type of opponents trouble Shiontek the most as she barely escaped Linda Noskova, another flat ball striker, in the round prior. However, she could not overcome the red-hot Russian who hit 31 winners to just Iga's 11. And then Ekaterina also hit 27 unforced errors and Iga, she hit 27 unforced errors too. Ekaterina was on fire in every department from, you know, hitting winners from all parts of the courts. She also attacked Iga's first and second serves relentlessly and she constantly applied pressure to the world number one and just rushed her it seemed like every single baseline to baseline exchange Iga was on her back foot and felt like she was more reacting to countering the shots instead of dictating herself alexandrova was also fairly dominant on her serve she hit eight aces and she only allowed Iga one break point Astonishingly enough, this is the first match since Adelaide 2022, which was January 2022, against Ash Barty, where Iga did not break serve a single time. The backhand has been really the stronger shot for Iga, despite popular belief. I know everyone believes that Iga's forehand is the best forehand on tour, the biggest shot on tour, but in 2024, the backhand has been the pole's more reliable shot, and it was the same story here in Miami. The backhand was more reliable. It was solid overall, but the forehand was very inconsistent, very erratic, and sprayed a lot, and a lot of times she framed that ball and just missed, messed up the timing and just hit it, you know, very just a lot of out balls on that forehand side and it's something we do not see in indian wells which is why she was so success successful there barely dropping games but here in miami that forehand has been a little bit more shaky especially against these flat ball strikers and the qu courts here in miami are a little bit quicker as opposed to indian wells a lot of people might be shocked by this result but i feel like an alexandrova win over shantek was bound to happen because of her flat game and she's also tested shantek a bit in their previous matches the 14th seed now faces world number five jessica pegula who outlasted her compatriot Emma navarro 7663 in a battle of the billionaires it's nice to see pegula getting back to her top form. She's been struggling a little bit in the early part of this season, but she seems, she seems to be on the right track here in this tournament. Now, another big scalp on Monday was third seed Coco Golf being sent home by Caroline Garcia with his final score of 6-3-1-6-6-2. Garcia is definitely back, for now at least. She outplayed Coco in that first set. She attacked Golf's second serve well and got her teeth in a lot of these baseline rallies. And she also took a lot of risks throughout this entire match, but especially in the first and third sets. And she got a lot of reward from those risks. She served very well too and was able to win a lot of free and easy points off of her strong first serves. She also did well to attack the Golf forehand during rallies when she's really able to go forehand to forehand, forehand, to forehand in those big sign exchanges and she was also able to seek opportunities to then move forward from golf's weaker forehand replies in the second set coco took advantage of some more second serve looks from garcia and she got a couple of early breaks to start and coco just served well herself too and from the ground she did a much better job of hitting with greater weight and depth of shot, which kept Garcia from taking control. Goff had four break points at the beginning of the decider, but she was unable to convert those chances, and that to me was really the big turning point of the match. Goff got broken immediately after failing to break, and Carol regained her form. She just steamrolled to victory at the end. This is Garcia's first top 10 win since the 2022 WTA Finals, which of course she won. Caroline is a very hot and cold type of player. One minute she's on fire and she can be any type of player, anyone in the world. And then the next minute she stinks up the place and loses to Magdalena Freck. You know, you just never know what you're gonna see from her. This tournament, it seems like those balls, those risks that she's keeps going for, it's paying off, but will those same risks pay off in the clay season i don't know but for now it's all good for her as i mentioned in my tournament preview she hadn't really done much in this season prior to this tournament but she's definitely saved her best tennis for the 305 as of course i mentioned she beat naomi osaka in a very very great match i actually think that match against osaka was perhaps better than the match today but both were equally or similarly equally very good levels of tennis from her her shoulder has been nagging her a bit throughout the event and she's been receiving treatment for that during her matches but it honestly does not seem to be bothering her in the end 
Up next for Caro is unseated American Daniel Collins, who scored a comprehensive 6-3-6-2 victory over Serrano Cristea. Cristea made the semifinals of Miami last year, and she scored dominant straight sets wins over Sloane Stevens and Dara Kazakina en route to this fourth round, so this was definitely a great win for Danielle. Side note, in her third round match against Kazakina, Kirstea hit a serve that was clearly wide, but the electronic line calling system made a mistake and did not make that out call. Kazakina contested the call to the umpire who clearly didn't pay any attention to the serve and just gave Kirstea the ace. Even Kirstea thought her serve was out and she was going back to hit a second serve before the umpire gave her, you know, the point. Maybe Elena Ostapenko was right all along about Hawkeye Live not being as accurate as people might think. Anyways, focusing back to today's match, Danielle was simply unbeatable. She was firing on all cylinders and her trademark backhand was on fire, of course, but her forehand to me was the standout shot. She hit so many winners off that forehand and she was able to really open the court and drag her stare left and right. This was a quintessential classic Collins performance. In addition to her excellent ball striking display, Danielle was fully animated and even played along with some pro Cristea Romanian fans as she blew them a kiss after sending their girl packing. Absolutely savage. Collins has been playing excellent tennis thus far this season, but she has been burdened with some challenging draws that have prevented her from really going as far as where she probably should be going in these events. She's actually won her last 15 of 19 matches, just goes to show you how well she's been playing. She did not have a great 2023 season at all, and a lot of that was due to her being riddled with injuries. However, this season, 2024 thus far, she's been relatively healthy, which is great to see, especially considering that this is going to be her final season on tour. I'm still not over that. Anyways, I think that she actually will be a pretty decent favorite against Garcia in this quarterfinal match as she holds a 3-0 head-to-head over the French woman and she's never even lost a set to Garcia in their previous matches. The bottom half of the women's draw looks very enticing despite the early exit of second seed Arena Sabalenka. Maria Sakri advanced to the last eight after Anna Kalinskaya pulled out of their fourth round match due to injury. The Greek woman is set to face last year's runner-up Elena Rabakina, who is the favorite for me to make the finals in this half. The Kazakh got through some tough early round matches against Taylor Townsend and Clara Towson, but had an excellent 6-3-7-5 win over Madison Keys. Meanwhile, Victoria Azarenka has a good shot at reaching her first Miami semifinal in six years, as she now gets unseated Yulia Putinseva in the Elite Eight. On the men's side, zero American men remain. Taylor Fritz, Francis Yafo, and Tommy Paul battle in the second round, while Ben Shelton, Chris Eubanks, and Sebi Corda bit the dust today to Lorenzo Musetti, Alex Zverev, and Hubie Hercox, respectively. Top seed in 2022 champion Carlos Alcaraz has looked solid thus far, recently dominating Gael Monfils 2 and 4. He gets Musetti for a spot on the Elite 8. Grigor Dimitrov and Hubie Hercox will meet for their fifth time, and surprisingly, the Bulgarian leads their head to head 4 0. Alexander Zverev and Karen Hatchinov will meet for the first time since their Tokyo 2021 one gold medal match at the Olympics. The German leads that head-to-head 3-2. -head Alex Di Menor takes on Hungarian Fabian Mardazan, who has yet to drop a set this event. Fabian took down Holger Rune in round 2, 6-1, 6-1. In the bottom half, Kasper Ruud will face Nico Jari, while Dino Medvedev meets unseated German Dominic Kotfer, who upset Hugo Umber. Yannick Sinner wouldn't have to face another seed until the semifinals, as he now faces Aussie Chris O'Connell and could then get the winner of Thomas Makac and Matteo Arnaldi. Makash defeated Andy Murray in the third round, and unfortunately, the Brit rolled his ankle badly in that affair. He announced on his Instagram that he fully ruptured his anterior talofibular ligament and will be out for an extended period. Murray said about a couple months back that he did not plan on playing much this past summer and aimed to compete at the Summer Olympics in Paris, but right now, this is in doubt. Andy has been through so many physical problems, which sucks, especially because he was playing so well in Miami before this injury happened. He was coming back from 5-2 down in that third set against Makach. I wish him all the best with this latest recovery process. That's all I have for my Miami Open recap and let me know in the comments who your picks are now to win the tournament now that Iga and Coco are out. Make sure you subscribe too and click the notification bell so you're notified whenever I post more Miami Open recaps. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch y'all in the next one.